All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and start working on this guy here. Let's get this heater core put in. Now I'm in my little garage. I don't have a lot of room here, so I will try to make my shots while my camera as steady as possible because I really don't have a lot of room for a tripod. And uh, maybe I'll invest in some little GoPros, uh, some little tiny cameras that might help me in the future. So let's jump into it and let's get some heat in this baby. Okay, so now the first thing you have to do is put both your seats all the way back and the passenger side. The reason is, is because we have to take out this center console and mine has a CD changer in it and I've had it out before. It's not that big of a deal to pull out, but I'll show you uh, some of the bolts there. And once we get this out, and uh, then we can start working on this dash. The whole idea is we got to get this out of here because it comes up, up up under the dash there. And what we got to do, we have to uh, unhook a lot of stuff in the dash, and we have to kind of have the passenger side swing forward so we can get in behind there and pull that heater core out and replace it. So let's jump into it. We got the center console coming apart. I want you to take out these little rubber uh, cup holder. Uh, placement pieces here. You can get right into the screws. These are T20. Go ahead and pull this out of here like this. Pull this back and this will come out and we got some wires here we have to unhook on the bottom. Okay so that center console piece is out of the way. Now we have to take out some little screws. There's eight millimeter screws. Uh, we have to take out. There's one right here. Get you a little extension. It works out pretty good. And uh, one is right there. The other one is over here on the bottom. And I've got a couple up here I have to take out. Yeah, someone's busted the bottom of this out. I bought it like this, but I'm going to replace this console. So once we get those out, and uh, then we can start pulling on this. Uh, we got a couple in the back here we'll take out, but we'll go ahead and take these out for now. Next thing is take your little socket. It's a 10 millimeter. Unplug this uh, wiring harness right here. It just uh, unscrews from this big socket. And you got a second wire here just unhook that. Push it off the side. And if we can fish this through the front of this, when we pull this console out. Now on this expedition, if you're uh, fortunate, unfortunate enough to have one of these consoles, actually it's gonna be more work taking this console out than it is uh, probably the dash, uh, jokingly, uh, sort of speaking. Uh, there are a couple bolts here we have to take out. These are little uh, eight millimeters, one on this side. This is why we don't unhook the battery just yet, because we have to move the seats forward and backwards. And I got the driver's seat right now all the way up. I don't know why I put it up earlier in the video, but uh, this is why we got to move the seat back and forth. So we got to keep the battery hooked up. Now let's go to the passenger side. Okay, here is the passenger side. Let's go ahead and get this one out of the way as we got the seat all the way forward. Now I'll go ahead and put the uh, passenger seat all the way back in the back position so we have uh, a lot of room there between the dash and the uh, passenger side seat because this side of the dash eventually it's going to swing out this way and now the driver's seat is all the way back now at this point we can go in and hook the battery cable hot or ground don't matter whatever it tickles your fancy i always do the hot and now we can go ahead and just kind of lay this hood down eventually we're going to have to disconnect a couple hoses there but that's later in the video now we'll go back inside all right now we got the cd changer out there's just a couple of screws here and there's a couple down here in the bottom right there and right over there we have to take out and this pulls right up and now we can unhook our wire i would like to put this back in because hey i still own cds and i like to play the music i bought them a long time ago and why throw away money so hopefully i can put all this back in get another uh a piece here a center console and put it all back to factory the way it was i know i'm old school i like to keep my vehicles the way they should be and by the way you don't have to take out your radio my radio is already uh, out. Was, I bought it like that, and that's just an aftermarket radio, but I'm getting a factory radio to put back in here so I can control my CD player and all that. So what we got to do now is go ahead and hook this guy, pull this wire, and we'll put this off to the side, and there's the CD changer. The reason we had to do that, we have these uh, screws here. These we got, both, we got one right there and one right there we have to take out. Okay, after we do that, this console is ready to come out. Now, a lot of people just start yanking on this thing. They can't figure out why it's not coming up. They're pulling up and, and it's getting hung up. What you have to do is grab it and slide it backwards like this. Pull it back. Then it will come right out and it'll be uh, good to have all this room. I'll have to set the camera down because I can't do this with one hand, but it's basically out and we'll take it out here and we'll look at it real quick. Here's a look at the console. It's, uh, it's fairly big. And you can see it's uh, got some big brackets on it. And here's the back of it. It has the cigarette lighter adapter. And let's turn this over on the side a little bit. And here's one of the holes. It has a screw in it. 
there's a look at the top and all that and I'm depressed that they busted this all up but I can go get another one at the junkyard and uh, there's a look at the front of it so that's how that comes out now look inside here real quick now look at all this room nope and I didn't find any money stashed away <laughs> hey I did find twelve hundred dollars one time in a vehicle in a glove box it had fallen behind the glove box when I was tearing the glove box out to fix something and it was a stash of $1,200 and $100 bills in cash. Hey, made my day. So now, uh, what we're going to do is start tearing the dash apart, I guess. Uh, we're going to start on that side, take some trim off, and work our way over. And we have some things to do here, but this dash is in all... It looks big, but trust me, it's not all that uh, difficult to get out. So having, getting, having gotten this out down here, uh, let's start on the dash. All right, so here we go. I've got me some good lights set up there. It's amazing what you can find at Goodwill <laughs> for next to nothing. I uh, got me some good lights now. Uh, so we'll go ahead and pull this out of the way. We've got to take this trim panel off here. Get this out of the way. And we got a trim piece here we have to take off. Pull this rubber out of the way, this weather stripping. Pull that back. Get this back out of the way. We've got to take this uh, handle off right here. Get this out of the way. These are just uh, little seven millimeter bolts some are eight some are seven it really depends i guess what you're working on on this vehicle and we'll pull the handle out of the way and i've got a pail a little uh cup here a little thing here to catch everything and i suggest you do the same thing so you don't lose everything and uh there it is and i've got two bolts that has come out of that and we'll just simply grab this piece pull it off and put it in the back now if you want if you have a radio you can go ahead and pop it up and since mine was halfway out and you saw what it looked like earlier we do have to pull this bezel off so we pull this bezel off and i already took the radio out because it makes the dash a little bit lighter and we got a wire on here we'll unhook that and we'll put this bezel in the back all right there is that put this in the back and uh there's a look at the bezel let's go ahead and pop this cover off I'll pop i pulled most of them out and we got one more right here Okay, there it is, and it should come right out, and it's just held in with these little uh, quick-release clips. Again, there's a couple of screws into the uh, airbag here that we have to take out. Two up here, uh, two on the, uh, one on the top and two on the bottom, and we access that through the glove box. All right, here comes the uh, top screw. That is a uh, eight millimeter for the airbag. Now we gotta get the two on the bottom. Okay, here comes our last screw out of the airbag. There was two on the bottom. And here comes the other one. I'll try not to drop it. You can see it kind of sitting right there. Take my hand there and grab it. And there it is. So that makes all three screws that are out. And all we have to do is put our hand behind it and push it out on it a little bit and gently pull it forward. I may have to use both hands because there's a wire harness on the back that we have to unhook. And and here it comes out. It was hung up there. Be very careful with this thing. Don't point it towards your face. I'm going to put it off to the side. And here is one of the wires that you have to unhook from the uh, bag, which is right there. And there's a secondary wire. Actually, the wire is on the back of the bag. And we'll take this and put it off to the side in a safe area. We've got a couple more screws on the top of the dash. But we've got these covers here we pop off. And I've already taken one off. And there's the cover for that one. And here is the screw. These are seven millimeter that come out. Little seven millimeter screws. And there's, those are out. Okay, so down here on the bottom of the dash, there's a cover we have to pop off. And there's these little plastic uh, push pins. Sorry about that. That we have to pop out right there of the uh, little plastic hole. <clears throat> and there's a cover and we have to go on the other side and unhook it. All right. Okay, there's that. And these pins can be a little tedious to get off. And let me hold the camera here a little bit better, a little steadier. And there it is. And that's, uh, the reason we got to do that is we got to take a bracket off. The bracket, which is over there. Right there, we got to take that guy off. Alright, we got to get this bracket out of the way. This is on the passenger side. Right near the center console there, underneath. We'll get that out of the way. I got the steering wheel tilted down. We got this uh, cover here. Uh, it's off. We'll put it in the back. And on the bottom here, we'll go ahead and pop this panel off here where the fuses are. Get that out of the way. Now we got to start taking some screws out here. 
Okay, so now I've got this uh, panel here off. You can see it's the panel that goes down below the steering column. And there's a lot of little screws in there. And they're all the same size except for one on the bottom down here. And there is one that is just a little bit bigger and it goes in right there. Uh, see, where, let me zoom in there a little bit. It goes in right there and it goes in part of that panel and it holds this up. It's just the only screw that's oddball screw that's up under there that's a little bit bigger. So be aware of that. Other than that, once I unhook this um, latch for the hood and the brake cable, I can just spit this off to the side. Okay, before we go too far, I almost forgot. We gotta take this uh, plastic hair off. We gotta take this rubber uh, weather stripping off. So before you go ahead and pull this panel back off, just stick, stick one screw back in it right there. Kind of hold that in and that'll let us get all this out of the way. Pull this panel out. We'll go ahead and take this weather stripping and just kind of take it completely out because it usually falls out anyway. The plastic panel out. Get that out of the way. Okay, now we can take our screw out. <clears throat> kind of let that hang down like that. Okay, so I got this panel out of the way, and you can see what it looks like. There was the uh, fuse box. Now, I did forget, forget to mention, on the very bottom, if I turn this hood latch upside down, there's actually another hidden screw right there. Same thing with this brake cable. If you flip this up really, really hard, if you look right there, there's a place a screw can go in. So, there's actually two screws on the uh, brake and the hood latch. And you might want to just take them both out first, then fish out this uh, panel. And at this point, go ahead and pull off your door handles and pull off the trim on this side. Now, there's no rule, right or wrong way to do this. As long as you take all the pieces off like I'm doing, you should be okay. Okay, so now I'm upside down on my back. Something very important here, if I can hold the camera, there is a little wire that goes up right there and that is your gear shift selector make sure you just kind of pop that off this fish it off and there's a little tiny screw right there that is a 5.5 a little tiny socket we'll take that off so we got to take that off so we don't break our gear shift selector and there it is and you can just leave that bolt in it right there it won't go anywhere it won't fall out and just let it hang because what we got to do now is take this bracket off here that holds the steering wheel up and we gotta let the steering wheel kind of pivot down. Alright, now here comes our bracket off the bottom of our steering wheel and it's held on by these 14 millimeter nuts. And there they are. Or there it is. So we got that off. Now we gotta go up here. And there's four more bolts right there on each side that actually will let that steering wheel drop down. This is just a brace, but those other four bolts now will let the steering wheel drop down. All right, now we're taking out our last 14 millimeter bolt, or nut, I should say, and this will let the wheel swing down. So you want to take one hand and hold it up while you do the uh, wrench, the ratchet here with the other one, because you just don't want it to fall down. You want to slowly let it fall down. So here comes our last bolt, and there it is. Let me grab the camera. So maybe you can actually see this, and let it slowly swing down. Making sure nothing's in the way. And that should be pretty good right about there. And you can see how that will give us some clearance with that dash to swing it out. I know you're saying that is a job. Well, we're over, we're two thirds of the way through here. We don't have too much more to do to go ahead and pull this dash out. All right, so we got our steering wheel down. Now what we got to do is go ahead and take this plastic cover here off. That covers the speedometer stuff because we got to pull this cluster out because when we pull this dash back, we don't want to stretch that wire that goes in the back of that uh, cluster there. So we just go, take, there's a lot of screws here. And I'll tell you, a lot of these are the same size. So when you put this back together, it's really going to be hard to mess this up. A lot of these are just seven millimeter screws. I got all these screws out and you can see there's quite a bit uh, that goes around this piece. You got three on the top up there, one there, one there, one there. And you got three over here and you've got three over here. Now there is one hidden screw that gets everybody. Pop your light headlight switch out and if you look right in there see that screw right there that one gets everybody they don't know it's there so once we take this out then we can just get this uh, plastic piece off then we can pop the uh, speedometer and stuff off screws out i just pop off your uh, wires to your light switch and off it comes now when you drop this down you got one more 
switch right there you got unhooked and that is your rear defroster I do believe or the heated seat switch whatever it is I'm not sure which one it is there <laughs> actually let's see which one it is pedals and seat oh that's the window heat okay still don't know if it must be the mirror front I don't know you know I never noticed that switch before now I'm gonna have to see what it goes uh, what it works but anyway make sure you unhook that so you don't break it all right, so we got four screws in the speedometer and they're all the same size and I'll tell you what do yourself a favor make sure you have a magnet because these things are lifesavers and the four screws are one there one is over there one is down there where my finger is I think you can kind of see where it goes down there and there's one that goes right about there and now we just simply pull this out like this and then hook it from the back and this will be out of the way because the reason we have to take this out there's also some bolts behind here that is bolted to the main frame of the uh, car that helps hold this dash in. So once we get those out and some de bolts over there out, then we're just about ready to pull this dash back. Okay, there's that one. So we got this out and now we'll put this off the side. Now some of these dash clusters, the uh, speedometer where the miles are showing, where it shows the miles, they blink on and off and so forth. You have to take these apart and there's a place in the back that you solder and it will take care of that. So if you want to check that out, I have a uh, video on my channel on how to do that. So we're back over here behind the airbag on the passenger side. We've got a couple of screws here. We have to take that one out and that one out. You notice this big metal thing right here. This is the frame that the dash is actually bolted to. So we got to get those out. And those are out now. And there's all, those are all 7 millimeter. And we got one on the top up here where that cover was on the passenger side. And this one is down here. And this is a 7 millimeter. We'll take that one out. And I'll go ahead and take this one out right here. This is on the passenger side down here on the bottom with this uh, screw by the door. Get this out and we'll put that off the side. And as you can see, the dash is already loose. So we don't have too much more here to do. A couple more bolts here to take out. We got this one that's a 10 millimeter. We have to get this out. This is where the bracket was earlier on the floor. That's right here below the glove box right about here there's a bracket down there you can't miss it that we took out earlier so this is where that is at so we'll put this off to the side back over on the passenger side we got two to take off we got one that was right there where my finger is and we got one right here that i've already started and i just dropped and it came out right there so we'll get those out of the way we got this one right here on the top right behind where the cluster was instrument cluster was and there it is and if I pick the camera up and pan back you can reference where that came out and if you notice there's a white bar right here this is what we're doing we're unbolting the dash from that bar clear across the back of it there and I think we just about got all the bolts out and we'll take around here for a minute or so and see if we can go ahead and uh, slide this dash out it may be uh, ready to come out a few bolts hiding on here we're going to take this one out this is on the uh, bottom of the bracket that uh, was on the other side, down here on the bottom of the door. I think you can see that. Get that off there. My dash is pretty loose, but I still can't quite get it out. But I found the reason why I have one screw right there in my finger. So I think you can see it right there. In there. So I'm going to go in my, get in there and grab that one. There we go. Apologize if you can't see and that was kind of hidden up under that steering column there back toward the back All right, I got it pulled back and uh, A little tip when you go to pull this back a little bit. There's a little bit of a wiring harness that gets hung up Right there On this bracket on the back side of this uh, I apologize. I'm trying to get the light set just right right here and you can see it's an orange cord with an antenna just kind of un unhook that right there on the corner push it up just push it back behind the dash and this will give you a uh, room to go ahead and pull this dash out of there but it's pulled back so let me get in there and pull it back a little bit farther and we'll go ahead and get our heater core in there now this took about three and a half hours for me to do this i walked away every half hour took a break came back and it was a lot less tedious i advise you to do the same thing it will make your life a lot easier. And look at that. Yeah, I can't believe I actually got it back. Well, here's a grand look. Here's a look behind the uh, 
there's the that's where the heater core is right there the box we gotta take all those little screws out you see right there all the way around take those out and we'll have access into it now it'll probably take me a little while I stick my hands back in there but I should be uh, I should have enough room here to work around and I could probably even pull this back another uh, six or eight inches if I want to but I'm not gonna stress it because you got some wires in there you don't want to pull too hard on them all right, so I got all my small bolts off all the way around and let me tell you it's a little tight because I can't open up my passenger door all the way because it's against the wall but I had a, a long enough arm to get in there now I couldn't I can't get the cover off it'll it'll move let me just kind of set the light down there and uh, you can see hello guys camera you can see it's loose and we have to unhook the hoses on the outside the other hoses that were on the heater core, I just pulled them off, put my hands up under there, and I have a video on how to do that. Uh, they have these little disconnect clips. Now here is a look at those pieces that I tuck off. Uh, these little disconnect things here. If you just flare these backwards, they'll slide right off. And I'll show you that once I get the heater core off. And there's the O-rings. And there's a, there's three on each one. There's two O-rings. Uh, you got an O-ring, a spacer, then an O-ring. It goes on there like that. Sort of, uh, let me get this set up here for you. Kind of like that. There's three of them on each side that goes on the uh, tube. When you slide that on that heater core so it doesn't leak so be aware of that and uh you have to take your time at it right now i got all the bolts out of this heater core box and I'm trying to get the top off and there's one bolt that's hidden back in there and i think you can see this if i pull my camera up like this there's one sticking down in the back there make sure you get that one out so we're about ready to pull this out of here uh we got to take this little duct work out there's a little screw right here just kind of pull this out of the way because this will give you a little more room to get those two hidden screws back there. There's actually two. I said one, but there's two. And be careful of that vacuum line there. and hook that. Then we can pull this out of here, this uh, piece. Then we can go ahead and start working on the heater core. I think you can see this vacuum line right here. Just kind of pull it off of the uh, cover that we're taking off. Get it out of the way. And if I back up here and get out here and get the light... I think you can watch me take this out of here now. And here it is. And this will give us access into our heater core. Doing it with one hand was kind of hard to do. And there's the cover that we had to take off. Now, there's the two hidden screws back down in there. Right there. So you have to... Let's see, there's one, two, three. Three screws that are hidden there. So you have to be careful about that. And here's a look at the cover. And uh, we'll just put it off to the side. And there's our heater core. And there is the air conditioning uh, unit there. And down there's the blend door. And uh, they recommend that you replace that blend door. But I'm going to check mine and make sure it's okay. Um, I didn't have one and I never thought about doing it. But uh, at least I have the heater core I can go ahead and stick in. And if I have any problems with the blend door later, I'll deal with it. But I think it should be okay. So uh, that's how you get into that. So let's go ahead and pull this heater core out. And let's see. Hey, I think that's about it. There. Okay, there's the blend door. Um, I had to pull up on a little bit because the bottom of this piece right there that usually breaks off in a lot of these. I tell you, Jeeps are bad about this, especially... Uh, the uh, 99 um, uh, Grand Cherokee, I don't know if they all break, but if you uh, you can get this online for about $20. And they have a metal uh, ring that goes around the bottom of this and makes it a lot sturdier. But mine's in really good shape, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. But there's the blend door and there's the housing that goes over the heater core. And here is my heater core. We're ready to pull it out of here. And there it is sitting in there. And I think I could probably set the camera somewhere here let me figure this out I have to hold the camera and you're gonna to have to do the best i can so i'm gonna pull this out of here this is why i didn't want to cut that foam out there and this is why i took a little extra time to take those pieces off because i didn't want to cut this piece of foam so i can just pull this out as one unit oops i tell you what it's rough one hand and a camera and working on the uh 
vehicle with the other one. So there it is. It is out. And uh, I'm going to cut this open tomorrow, next tomorrow or the next day after I get this uh, all back together. And I want to see uh, how bad it is. I'm and look at that, kids. I didn't cut that foam like some people do. They pull that foam out with a heater core because they can't get the ends off of the tubes on the outside. So uh, my new heater core will stick in that foam out the firewall. And I should have pretty efficient heating. And uh, the air sealed is uh, what I really want. I didn't want to get a bunch of air blowing around. So it's still uh, going to look pretty good and should work pretty good. All right, there's our new one. I'll get the tape all around it, the insulation tape. And I'm ready to drop it back in. And it'll go in just like that, and I uh, should have no problems getting it back in. So we'll go ahead and drop this baby in. All right, there's a nice look at it. It's in, and uh, I'm not going to show you every step how to put it back in. You just reverse the stuff. But I got the blend, blend doors back on, and I double checked it. I put the key in the ignition and hooked the battery up real quick, and just made sure that it works. And uh, it looks like it's going to be okay. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now all I gotta do is go ahead and put the cover back on and just kind of take my time, make sure I get all the screws and stuff in there and uh, finish up here. All right, I got the cover on. So all I gotta do now is put the dash back together. Now I had some trouble getting that cover on. For some reason it wouldn't go down on the top of the uh, radiator, or the, the heater core, and I couldn't figure out what was wrong. Well, if you look closely, mine are kind of flat as they come out of the uh, top of the heater core. The new heater core that I put in, well, the tubes are just round, and there's a lot more uh, space there. Uh, well, I should say it's a lot fatter there, so I had to actually take a file and file just a little bit on the top of that box where these rest, kind of rest right there. So it would drop down maybe just maybe an eighth of an inch, enough to make that uh, top of that uh, cover flush, but you might not have that problem, but... I just wanted to make sure this was on our perfect so it would have a good air seal. But other than that, it's in. So I'm going to wrap up here. And we'll, uh, next time we uh, look at the video here, we'll go ahead and start it up and put some uh, antifreeze in it and see how good the heat is. All right, guys. Uh, 24 hours later, and I have good news. She's running really good. I got great heat on the inside. And it's snowing. It's uh, about 16 above zero out here. Right? And it's going to be below zero again tonight. And I tell you what, this is probably the best thing. I did to this vehicle since I've had it. I've had it about a year and a half, almost two years. Got all my hoses hooked up. I was a little worried about leaks, but I was able to get those clips on there and all that. Now, if you lose a clip or break one, you can simply just cut that hose off and put a clamp on there if you want. I probably should have done that, but I like to keep things factory and I have no leaks and uh, she's running really good. And uh, I'll tell you what, she looks pretty good out here in the snow. And this thing's a beast. It will go in the snow. And uh, someday I'm going to put some big tires on it. And uh, set it up a little bit. Put my uh, step guards back on it. Rocker uh, guards on the side and all that. Make it look good. But anyway, let's go inside and show you how warm it is. Oh, and by uh, by the way, one I almost forgot to tell you. One thing you really need to do after you put a new heater core in any vehicle. Change out the old antifreeze. I put the new antifreeze in. That's what I'm going to do as soon as the weather breaks. Uh, everything's full. And I've got really, really good heat. So now let's go inside. Okay, we're inside, and I've got my little digital gauge hooked up there, and we're running about 123 degrees. And I have this set on low, the fan speed, and my operating temperature is up there. Uh, just about, I think you can see it there, just about in the middle. Kind of hard to get the operating temperature exactly all the way up because, like I said, it's only uh, 16 degrees outside, but... I couldn't be I couldn't be happier. This has really just made a tremendous difference inside the vehicle. Um, so if you're going to do this, I just wanted to uh, make a video, and I apologize for all the shaky camera and all that, and some of the uh, parts of the video because it's just hard to get in here and do this kind of work and film when you don't have a very big garage and when you can only get the dash back so far. So uh, hopefully this video will help you out. So if you uh, got to put a heater cord in your Expedition, I know the F-150s. All of them are a little bit different. Some of the bolts might be in different places. Some of the fasteners may be a little different, but the, in general, it's basically the same process. If you can get this dash back far enough, you can get in there and work around that heater core. And uh, I haven't put my center console back in yet. I'm gonna see if I can find another one and put it back in. I ordered me a factory radio with a CD uh, changer and all that. It's coming soon and um, put all that back in. And uh, I, I couldn't be happier. I mean, it's probably about 85, 90 degrees in here. Feels really good now. 
and I'll probably end up doing the back one. Uh, probably do the back heater core maybe in a week or two, and I'll do a video on that. So that's it, guys. Stay warm, and uh, until next video, be careful, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.